Hey guys and welcome to my channel. I'm Miss Danielson and I'm taking you through a lesson on place value today. If you are new to this channel, let me just explain how it works. First, I'll give you a lesson, including some examples, and then I'll leave you with a pause and practice exercise at the end with the answers taken up. All right, let's get started. First of all, what we're going to be learning in this lesson is to understand the impact of place value on the value of any digit in that place. We are also going to have a look at the names of different place values, both to the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the decimal point. And finally, we're going to be able to order our numbers by their value, so from biggest to smallest or from smallest to biggest. So first of all, you should know that the place value system is based on the 10 digits of our number system. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Including 0, that is 10 digits. This is why any digit in a number has 10 times the value it would have had if it were one place to the right. Let me show you an example to clarify that for you. So for example, in the number 440, there are two fours in this number, but they do not have the same value because they are in a different place value. One of the fours is worth 40 because it's a four in the tens position, while the other four is in the hundreds position. So that means it's worth 400. 400 is 10 times 40. So every time we move up a place value, we need to multiply the digit in that value by 10. As we've just said, place value works in jumps of tens, but place value names can be grouped into groups of three, hundreds, tens, and units. And I'm not just talking about those three place values, the hundreds position, the tens position, and the units position, but that group of three can occur in the units, in the thousands, in the millions, in the billions, and so on, always in groups of threes. We space out our groups of hundreds, tens, and units in groups of threes. So hundreds, tens, and units of billions, hundreds, tens, and units of millions, hundreds, tens, and units of thousands, hundreds, tens, and units of units, always grouped in threes. We never, however, use commas or decimals for this. And the reason for that is because I'm sure that there are people here who use commas to separate their hundreds, tens, and units, and there are people who use decimals to separate them. It depends on where you come from. In Spain, we often use decimal points, whereas in America, Canada, the UK, we often use commas, so that we don't get into an argument about this, we're not going to use either of them. We're just going to use spaces. So here's an example. There are no commas or decimals in this number. So this is a whole number. And as you can see by my spacing, this is 4,785,343. For numbers with a decimal point, we will know that that value is not a whole number. It may have a whole number part to it, and it may have a decimal part that comes after that. So then we would say that this is a whole number and we would name the fractional part that comes after that. So that's why with a decimal point, we say and at the decimal point, and then we name the multi-digit number that follows after the decimal. And then we give the place value name of the final digit at the end of the number. I'm sure we need an example to clarify that. So let's have a look. Now I'm gonna give you a place value table because I think that's gonna be easier for you to name these values. You're not going to get one on tests or exams, however, but if you find this helpful, remember that this is a tool that you can use. Place values to the right of the decimal point, you can see I've put in darker blue here. These represent the fractional values, and they always end with thirds, starting with tenths. That is one out of ten tenths. After that, we get the hundredths. That is one out of a hundred is a hundredth, and so on. Right, so let's have a look at some examples. First, we've got this number here, and I've got my numbers nicely lined up with the place values they belong in. You can see here in light green, I've got four in the units of the millions. So that's four million. Here in the thousands, I've got a three-digit number, 785,000. And then in the units, I've got my numbers in dark green here, and I've got a three-digit number, 343. Notice I did not say and at any time. 
That's 4,785,343. So next I've got a decimal value. It does have a whole number part and a decimal part. So first I'll name the whole number part. That's 705. Be careful not to say 705. 705. I get to the decimal point and I say and. And I name the number after the decimal point. 42. And then I look to the place value of the last digit. It's in the hundredths position. So this number is 705 and 42 hundredths. Next, I have a decimal value, which is not a whole number at all. There is no whole number part to this because I've got zero to the left of the decimal point. I always need to have some digit on the left of the decimal point, even if it's a zero, just to make it very clear where the decimal is. But in this case, I don't need to say zero and. I can just go ahead and name the multi-digit number after the decimal point, so 18, and then look at the place value of that last digit. This eight is in the thousandths position. So this is 18 thousandths. Let's try some practice for yourself. So go ahead and copy these numbers down and then write the number in words. Be very careful when you say and. We only say and when we get to the decimal point. Now it may seem like a silly rule, but you'll see that our questions are very similar. The digits are very similar, and even the place values a lot of the times are very similar. And if you don't write this out correctly, if you don't put your and in the right place, you might be writing the name of a completely different number. So go ahead and hit pause now and give that a go. Okay, I hope you've had a chance to write that down. Let's take it up. This first one is 8,420,000. And seven in the thousands position. 8,420,000 and seven thousandths. The second question, so part B, is 8,400 and 27 thousandths. Next we've got 8,420,000 and 7 thousandths. Finally, we've got 8,400,020 and 7 thousandths. Notice that for question A and B, if you had said 8,420,000 and 7 thousandths in part A, you would be mistaking that with question B. 8,420,000 and 27 thousandths. When we say the and, the 20 is coming after the decimal point. So there's why we need to be careful with our and. Very often on tests and in textbooks, and I'm sure even your teacher will say and when they're not supposed to. This is the correct way that we need to be doing it. So although we're not perfect, we are striving for perfection here. So try to remember that about that and. Let's move on to ordering values now. So putting numbers in order by size. In order to do this, the easiest way is to first look at the place value or the highest place value of any number. If both numbers reach as high as the same place value, then we compare the digits in that place value. And if they're the same, we start comparing the ones below as well. Let me show you. So here we've got four different numbers, and they all reach the same highest place value. They all have digits in the millions. They all, in fact, have the same digit in the millions. They all have eight in the millions. So let's go down from there and compare the next place value. So in the hundreds of thousands, for A, I see that we've got zero in the hundreds of thousands. For B, I see that we've got zero in the hundreds of thousands as well. For C, I've got a four in the hundreds of thousands, and D, I've got a five in the hundreds of thousands. So I already know which is the biggest number. D is gonna be my biggest one because it's got an eight in the millions like all of the others, but then in the hundreds of thousands position, it's the only number with a value of five or higher. So from largest to smallest, I'm starting with D. 8,500,020 and 
and 7 thousandths. That's my biggest number. Note my inequality sign shows that this number is on the bigger side. The one that comes after will be on the smaller side. So what's the next biggest number? Again, remember, all of the numbers reach the millions position, and they all have an 8 in the millions position. The next place value is the hundreds of thousands, and the only number that has a value in the hundreds of thousands position is C. We've got a 4 in the hundreds of thousands position there. So that's going to be our next biggest number. 8,420,000 and 7 thousandths. So now we're left with just the A and the B. They both have the same value in the millions position. They both have zero in the hundreds of thousands, zero in the tens of thousands, zero in the units of thousands. And in the hundreds, they've got the same number as well. They've both got fours. So we keep going. A has a two in the tens position, while B has a zero in the tens position. So A is definitely bigger. Remember, we always work from the highest place value, and we work our way down to the lowest place value. Often I see people look in the lowest place values and they say, oh, but I see 27 here and only 7 here. Yes, but I would much rather have 420 and 7 thousandths than 400 and 27 thousandths. These place values have a higher value than our decimal values, so we'll always start from the highest place. Next number is 8,420 and 7 thousandths. And finally, our smallest value was 8,427 thousandths. Let's do some practice for yourself now. So you're going to name these numbers for yourself. Be very careful when you're going to say and. Notice I've color coded them for you and I spaced them out nicely for you. Remember on a test, if it's not nicely spaced out, you might want to rewrite it nicely spaced out. You may even want to try and line up your place values as I've done for you here. Okay, then you want to list the numbers in ascending order. Now this vocabulary is very helpful when you come to a test or an exam and you don't know what ascending means. Ascending means going upwards, so from smallest to biggest. Go ahead and hit pause and give that a go for yourself. I hope you've hit pause. Let's have a look. For A, this is 23,089 and one-tenth. Notice I only said and when I got to the decimal. Question B doesn't have a decimal, so I won't say and at all. This is 100,002,400. No ands in there at all. Question C is 929,102 and 198 thousandths. I only said and at the decimal. Be very careful. Question D, 702,014 and 8 hundredths. And question E, 23,089 and one hundredth. Now putting these numbers in ascending order, so that's starting with the smallest, we've got 700 to 1014 and 8 hundredths is our smallest. See, it doesn't reach up to the millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions, and 7 is smaller than 9. Then we've got 929,102 and 198 thousandths. Then we get up to these two values, which are reaching up the tens of millions. Both of them are 23 million. Both got zero in the thousands. And then they both have 89 in the units. So have a look at the decimal values. This is one tenth is bigger than one hundredth. So our next smallest number is E, 23 million, 89 and one hundredth. Then we've got A, 23,089,000 and one-tenth. And then, hopefully obvious, we've got B, which reaches up to the hundreds of millions, while none of the other numbers did. This is 100,000,000, 2,400. Okay, warning. Big mistake that gets made all the time. 
on both my tests and on official exams. Do not confuse values with place values. Place value is the name of the position, the place of that digit, while the value is how much is it worth. Let me show you a couple of examples and then I'll give you some practice of your own. So this number here, 43,760, what is the place value of the three in the number? So what is the position of the three? What do we call that position? Is it the tens? Is it the units? Is it the hundreds? It's the thousands. The three is in the thousands position. That's its place value, the name of where it is. B, what is the value of the seven in this number? The value, how much is that seven worth? It is not worth seven or it would be in the units position. It's not in the units position. It's in the hundreds position. So it's worth 700. Now it's your turn. Time for some practice. So what is the place value of the five in these numbers? Place value, is that the value or is that the position? And then what is the value of the seven in these numbers? That should be clear, the value. That's the value, not the position. And then finally, list the following numbers in descending order. Some more good vocabulary for you again. Descending means going down, so biggest to smallest. Hit pause now and give that a go, and hit play when you're ready to see the answers. I hope you had a chance to hit pause and copy those out. Let's go with the answers. So questions A to E for the place value. That's the position name. The hundreds, the thousands, the hundredths, the tens, and the units. I really hope you copied the question as well, because just writing these place value names won't mean anything to you when you're going over to revise this. Next, let's have a look at the value of the seven. For each of these questions, the value of the seven is in the units position, that's seven. In the thousands position, that's 7,000. In the tenths position, that's seven tenths. In the hundredths, that's 700. And in the tens position, you could write seven tens, but I'd much rather write 70. And finally, listing the values in descending order, that's from biggest to smallest, for A, for B, and for C. Now, I hope you found this lesson and this practice exercise helpful. Please leave me a comment if there's anything that I've left a bit unclear so that I can help clear that up for you. And otherwise, stay tuned for our next lesson on multiplying and dividing by base 10 values. So playing with our place value system, playing with the fact that it's based on 10. Till next time, keep practicing and I will see you soon.